Jennifer, thank you so much indeed for your time. And there is some sort of Sufi connection. I don't know if that particular song that you were singing there had any element of Sufism about it, but the way you recite the Quran and some of the songs that you sing, they have an element of Sufism. So tell us what Sufism is to you. Well, I don't see Sufism necessarily as separate from Sunnism or Islam in general. It's just like another basically branch of knowledge and a way to get closer to God. And really, that's the ultimate goal of all, you know, of all ways of practicing Islam. So, I mean, Islam is so versatile. It's so diverse. Um, there are so many different cultures and different people who follow Islam. So it's really about whatever makes you feel closest to God. And um, as you said beautifully, Sufism is more a way of contemplation of the self. Um, and yeah, that's what it is to me, basically. And I'm still no. really pretty new to the whole concept of like Sufism and Sufi music in general, but it's something I'm exploring. So. Uh, that's also my understanding. I was going to say that uh, it's not at all a separate sect of Islam. It is very much part of mainstream Islam, but it has something slightly more almost transcendental about it. When you see the whirling dervishes and the way they are mm -hmm. in some kind of religious trance when they're doing that dance. And I'm just wondering if at a time like this, when people are isolated, when they can't socialize the way humans need to do, when there is a fear of the unknown, whether it might be a way to actually find some sort of solace away from the reality of life. Of course, yeah. I mean, everybody needs time to sit and be by themselves and contemplate. And this is such an important aspect of, of all spirituality, I think. And it can be a blessing. I mean, for some, obviously, it's getting crazy. You know, people who have like a million children running around and they have no help now. Um, as we saw in the segments before, there's people suffering from domestic violence. So it's not the same for anybody. But I would definitely say for whoever um, has the blessing of just having this time to themselves, it definitely is a way to get, you know, closer and to explore the self. Are there any famous Sufis of the past who have inspired you? Um, well, I love Rumi. I mean, I know that's pretty stereotypical, like everybody says that, but his, I mean, his poetry is really amazing. And I think a lot of people who, uh, read his poetry sometimes because he talks about love. And a lot of people think it's talking about romantic love. But once you become Muslim and you develop the love for Allah, and then you read his poetry after that, it's like, oh, wow, it's so much deeper than that. Um, he's talking about the love of Allah, and, and, yeah, his poetry really is timeless and amazing. Jennifer, thank you so much indeed uh, for talking to us. You know what? I'll give you a roomy quote just for you. This is love, to fly toward a secret sky, to cause a hundred veils to fall each moment. First, to let go of life. Finally, to take a step without feet. Jennifer Grout. Really lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much. You know what? We're going to end the show with more of your music. Take care. Thanks for joining us. And thank you so much indeed for joining us. That's the news hour. We'll be back with a full bulletin in about four minutes or so. Bye-bye.